Right oh, kit inspection. Stand by your beds, ready in five minutes. Oh, hello. I'm sorry, I mustn't have heard you knock. Oh, I just wanted a word with Ken. Well, he's upstairs changing. Can I help? Oh, it was just about the twins. What about the twins? Well, does he still want them picking up after school every day? Well, I think you can take it that from now on I'll be assuming full responsibility, Miss Lynch. And that will include collecting them from school each day. Oh, well. Tell Ken not to bother with the usual golden handshake. I, I'd probably only spend it anyway. Oh, um, hello. Are you looking for me? Not now. I've just been telling Miss Lynch we won't be taking advantage of her kindness any further, Ken. Not now that I'm here to look after the twins. Oh, oh, I see. Well, I suppose when you think about it, you will get under each other's feet a bit. Two women in the same kitchen. You do understand that? Sure. And of course, you can come and work here whenever you want. That's if you'd like to, sir. Only too happy. Great, great. Oh, and Ben. Yeah. Thanks. For everything. Any time. Not twice. Ask for Lynch. I wish you'd let me tell her that. Well, it wasn't something I enjoyed doing, believe me. But when she came in and asked me, I hadn't got very much choice. Well, she's been I a don't... good Samaritan to me, as better. If she hadn't come in at such short notice, I don't know how I would have coped. Well, and these must have been the devil drives. Look, suppose. Mother, I know she wasn't exactly brought up at Rodin, but she's still a very nice girl. Well, I don't doubt that for one minute. And she's not suitable material for bringing up Susan and Peter, right? What do you think she is? She's very good with the children. Well, of course she would be, wouldn't she? What do you mean? Well, she has got a child of her own, hasn't she? Of course, she's had it adopted, but still. Oh, I see, and that makes all the difference. Oh, come it? along, Ken. Don't strike these fashionable attitudes with me. Bet Lynch may have a heart of gold, but a barmaid with a background like that is hardly the person to bring up your children. Only she's not bringing up the children, is she? Nor is anybody else, for that matter. I am. To the best of your ability, yes. But nobody can be in two places at once, Ken. Nobody. Oh, good Lord, look at the time. I'd better get a move on. we will be out of school. Down at the garage to do that job in half the time. Want me to drop it in? Yeah, yeah, thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. One of those days. Oh. Oh, Mrs. Tedlock? Hello. I'll probably call at the shops on the way back to get some wool for Peter's sweater. All right. Domestic problems? Have you ever had a yam? You go to Liverpool docks. Jump on the first boat there and get off the other side with a totally different identity. Well, not lately, but I know what you mean. I just said we're getting blind drunk. Come on, worst things happen at sea. That's how I keep telling myself. Hello, love. I was just going to have a cup of tea with you. Oh? Well, what's up? I'm not sure yet. What does that mean? I've just had a telephone message from the personnel office at the warehouse. Oh? They want me to go and see him. What well, do they say what it's all about? No. Nope. Huh? Well, perhaps they want to offer you a job back? Well, I hope they do, because it'll give me very great pleasure to tell them where to stick it, won't it? Come on, let's have a cup of tea while we've still got a cup with a handle on it. <laughs> Big night tonight, eh, love? Yeah. Are you coming? There's no show without punch. And Judy's. Me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, Mr. Fairclough. Everything finished then? Aye. Well, would you like to have a drink on me before you go? Never before sundown, oh. thank you, darling. What? You're not shifting four pints each at dinner time. What about them? Oh, well, that's different. That was their breakfast, wasn't it? <laughs> oh. I'll tell you what you can do, Luke. You can buy us both a dirty big foaming pint tonight. Both? Yeah, me and Ray. Oh, well, what about Stan? Oh, well, that's a little bit tricky, that, love. Oh? It's not that we don't like his company out like that, but it's, uh, it's full moon, isn't it? It's full moon? Yeah, when it's full moon, you see, Hilda has to lock him in the, uh, the coal hole. Does he go a bit... Oh, no, no, it's not like that. It's this air he gets, you see. It keeps sprouting out of his face, oh, you know. Oh, dreadful. Oh, don't let it worry you, love. It's just fella's talk. You know, you don't all have to have brains, Mr Fairclough. Oh. I could fancy him on a quiet night. It'd have to be flipping quiet, wouldn't it? <laughs> Get on, you're only jealous. Here, 
Hand these couple of tickets to George at the door and you'll have no trouble getting in tonight. You couldn't make it three, could you, love? But you've just said... No, 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 it's not for Stan. I mean, for another mate of ours. He's a school teacher, you see. I just thought we might drag him along tonight, I don't know. A school teacher, eh? Oh, I'm very partial to the clever type myself. Uh, not this one, love. Why not? Doesn't he like girls? He buried his wife three months since. Oh. That's why we thought we might drag him out tonight, get him out of himself a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Right, hey, boss. I'm all packed up if you are. Right, where's Oggy? Come on, Stanley. <laughs> uh, you carry on, I'll catch you up. Eh? Have you ever had that feeling you're just not wanted? Aye. He's a bitter man, love, but I shouldn't waste any of the good stuff out of the taps on him. A couple of buckets of slops will keep him busy for at least ten minutes, as long as it's free, gratis and for now. I'll see you right. later then, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Till tonight, then, Josephine. It's all right. Get him one in, love. OK, Stan, you can come out now. Like it's thirsty work, that working. Half a bit of do you, Stan. Tyler, what do you want, Stan? Oh, music, eh? I used to be a show business myself at one time, you know. Well, uh, on the fringe, like, you know. Oh. Will you sing us, Stan? Oh, no, 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 no. A writer, you know, songs, like, you know. Oh, oh I had no idea you were musical. My word, you have got hidden talents, haven't you? Well, uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, Stan. Look, my pianist hasn't shown up yet. Eh? Why don't you run through a couple of my numbers with me right now, eh? Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey. Hey. This is a bit dodgy, this, you know. Eh? Oh, well, I mean, I, I, I don't play myself, no. But you've just said you were a songwriter. Well, I, I make them getting put down, you know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> oh, well. Maybe you'll write me a song one day, eh, Stan? Oh, well, well maybe, yeah. Mind you. I don't write much these days, you know. Not with all this, this pop stuff, no. I'm more uh, a Rudolf Melacrino, you know. Oh, you mean standards. Eh? Standards. Oh, well, yeah, a bit of everything, you know. <laughs> it's smashing beer, this. I bet you could find room for another, too, couldn't you? Eh? Well, I haven't got much time, you know, but <laughs> if you twist my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 what a happy chance. Here we are, gasping for a wet, and is your old naval chum, Salty Alan Howard, just waiting to wet us one in. Oh, no. Give us a couple of pints of bitter, love, and one for the fellow who's paying. You know, sometimes I don't give too lie and wait for me. Mm. <laughs> ah, there we are, then, Mrs Walker. And now, you shouldn't have bothered, love. I'd have sent oh, Billy round. That's all right. I take it you haven't heard anything further about? No. You? Not a word, but I have a distinct feeling something is afoot. Alan's been rinsing the beer at the bottom of his glass ever since we opened. I see. Mm. Oh, I do hope we did the right thing. Oh, so do I. The carousel club. Yeah, you know, that place where we've just been doing the, the big wiring job, the big piping job. I know, it's where I'll see it. Yes, I know it. Well, it's opening tonight. Every amenity, mate. Beer on tap. Hot and cold running barmaids. Mostly hot, of course, but all tastes are catered for. Where's that, then? The Carousel Club, Weatherfield's most exciting night spot. Mm. That is apart from the long grass down on the Red Wreck, you know. Hey, do you fancy coming along? I mean, we could wangle another ticket. No, not tonight, then. Oh, come on, get the ball and chain off for a bit. Let the air get at your ankle. Some other time, eh? Ask oh. me if I'll come. You don't take girls to the Carousel Club. Why not? Is it one of them there like they have in Amsterdam? <laughs> She must be joking, of course. Oh, one of them flesh pots, is it? It don't come any fleshier. So, you're seeking new pastures. We're not good enough here for you anymore. Well, you've got to spread it about a bit, haven't you? And, of course, we can't forget what the King of Siam once said. And what did he say when he was at home, then? A girl must be like the blossom, with honey for just one man. But a man must be like the honeybee, and gather all he can. <laughs> what a lovely old-fashioned English sentiment. I'll drink to that. Aye, right. right. cheers. Uh, Alan? Mm. Um, uh, Elsie's, uh, Elsie's not with you, is she? No, something came up. She had to go back and see the personnel manager out of the warehouse. Oh, she's gone to see Mr Maxwell, has she? Well, I thought his name was Pollard. Oh, um, well, um, it's, it's, a, it's a Mr Maxwell now. Oh? How do you know? Um. Hello, Mr Maxwell's office. No, I'm afraid he's just popped out. Yes. Yes, I'll tell him. <laughs> yes, all right. Goodbye. 
Oh, come in. This is Howard. You asked me to call back. Oh, yes. Um, do sit down, Mrs. Howard. Mr. Maxwell won't be a moment. Maxwell? Whatever happened to Pollard? Oh, Mr. Pollard left. Mr. Maxwell's the permanent personnel officer here now. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Howard, your um, references. Is this what you call me back for? Oh, no, Mrs. Howard, there's more than that. What, exactly? I think Mr. Maxwell would prefer to tell you that himself, Mrs. Howard. Steak, all right? Yes, it's fine, thank you. Shall I pour you another cup of tea? No, thank you. I suppose you had the sense to keep this. What? Well, it's buttoned off this jacket. Oh, yeah, it's in the top pocket. Leave it, Mother. I'll, I'll deal with that later. Oh, well, I'll see to it. Got as much stuff in here as our Peter. Mother? Yes? What are your plans? Well, I don't know that I have any. I suppose when I got that phone call, well, I, I just reacted. Anyway, now that I am here, we'll have to see how things work out, won't we? You haven't forgotten that little chat we had about Susan and Peter before you went home last time? No, I haven't forgotten. My attitude hasn't changed. I didn't for one minute think it would have. But the situation's changed, hasn't it? I mean, the last time I caught that train back to Glasgow, you had somebody professional to line, lined up to look after them. Now all you've got is Bet Lynch. So you've no idea how long you'll be staying? Well, just as long as it's necessary. No more, no less. Can I come in? Oh, hello, Lan. Yeah, come in. So that's the gorgeous smell, is it? You know, it's been driving me up the wall with flipping envy. Yes, ever since Mother's been back, she's been spoiling us, haven't you, Mother? Just straightforward steak and chips. Hey, you couldn't find that an extra couple of hours each day with you to look after a couple of fellow stomachs who were crying out for help. No, thank you. From what I can see, I've got more than enough to cope with here. Don't let her worry out. Well, what can I do for you, then? Well, I'll tell you, you see. There's these two very good-looking fellas called Langton and Fairclough. Oh, yes? And they've been invited out to a do tonight to this new club, you see, called the Carousel. But the thing is that they've never been trusted out in the dark on their own before. Oh, I see. And we wondered, like, with you being sort of a schoolteacher, whether you would come along and hold our hands on the way home. Tonight? Yeah, well, what do you say, then? Well, I say, thank you very much, Len, but, uh, no thanks. You're missing a very good booze up, Well, mate. yes, I'm sure, I'm sure that I am, but, uh, not this time, eh? Could you try and knock some sense into this fellow's school to get him to come out with us tonight, love? Oh, come out with you where? Ray and me for a couple of bivvies. I can't think of one good reason why he shouldn't. I mean, I'm certainly not going out, so the twins will be in good hands. Oh, go on with you, Ken, you need the break. Ah, oh, come on, Ken, you know, the more you look at wallpaper, the more you climb up it. I'm sure he'll go with you. Now, go on, won't you? Go on, then. Good, I'll call for you about 8 o'clock tonight. Right, then. right. You know, Ken, as mother-in-laws go, you've got one straight out of a hat there. Mine never said more than two words to me all the time I was married. And I wouldn't repeat them in company. Well, it's been a long minute this last half hour, hasn't it? I'm sure I can't think what's holding him up. He well, won't be much longer, Mrs. Howard. Well, whatever it is, I hope he isn't much longer, because if he isn't here in five minutes, I won't be either. Oh, Mr. Maxwell, Mrs. Howard. Ah, oh, yes, uh, will you come through? I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. That makes it unanimous, doesn't it? I don't think we'll be needing you for anything more tonight, Susie, thanks. Right, sir. Good night. I'll do sit down. Thank you. So, you're the Mrs. Howard all the fuss is about. Yes, that's right. What happened to Mr. Pollard that started all the fuss in the first place? Well, Mr. Pollard's what you might call a troubleshooter for the firm. He sets the operation up and then he disappears to another part of the country to do the same thing there. You did say troubleshooter. Look, Mr. Pollard, um, first of all, offered you a job and then he withdrew the offer, right? So far, yes. I'm going to be perfectly frank with you, Mrs. Howard. As far as I'm concerned, that's where the matter would have rested. But uh, a couple of your friends came to see me. Friends?
friends. Yeah, a Mrs. Clegg and a Mrs. Walker. Oh, yes. This is the first you've heard of it? Yes, it is. Yes, I thought it might be. Well, in a nutshell, they entered a plea on your behalf, a very strong one. Now, you listen to me, Mr. Maxwell. I don't know what they said about me, and frankly, I don't want to know. But I think there's one thing you should know, and very quickly. I've never pleaded for anything in my, my life, and especially a top me job like you're offering. I'm too old to start now. Uh, please, Mrs. Howard, all I'm trying to tell you is that these two ladies spoke so highly of you that we thought it worthwhile making a few more local inquiries about you. Oh, that's nice. What are you stuck in here, anyway? Gold-plated knicker elastic? Look, come on now. You've been in the rag trade. You know as well as I do that you can't be too careful in a warehouse this size who you take on. And anyway, I should have thought you would have been as interested as we were in clearing your good name. My good name didn't need clearing until you lot started mucking about with it. Look, if you just let me finish, all I'm trying to tell you is that nobody around here had anything but the highest praise for your character. And uh, we made a mistake. We admit it. We didn't go as deeply into the matter as we might have done, but now... I'm glad to be able to tell you I'm in a position to offer you the job back. That's supposing I want it back? Well, you must have wanted it once upon a time. You uh, applied for it. Oh, yes, that was once upon a time, before I knew you had the secret police doing security for you. Look, I know how you must feel, but try to see it from our point of view. I mean, thousands of pounds of the stuff will be passing through this warehouse every week. Now, inevitably, some of it will uh, disappear en route. We just can't afford to take chances. Now, what do you say we wipe the slate clean and start all over again. Can I think about it? Yes, of course. All right. I will. Welcome to the carousel, gentlemen. Ah, uh, thank you, Stella. Hello. Oh, where is he? The great big hunk of man. Don't use bad language, Lou. <laughs> Uh, who's she talking about there? She fancies Bill Doggy. <laughs> you're joking! <laughs> and while you're at it, love, just three big points. Avointment, just to go with that lot. Hey, steady on, you know. I've not got ten legs like you. If two. you're gonna dolce vita, you're gonna dolce flipping vita and get one for yourself as well while you're at it, darling. Thanks very much. I'll have a bit of lemon. You see what I mean? <laughs> not only clean living, but gorgeous with it. Oh, by the way, that's Candy. Candy? That's Ken Barlow. Hello. Hi. And I will just go and tell Ray Langton that that bird that he's leaning on there is married to a wrestler. Oh. <laughs> he's a card, that one. Yes. It's a bit quiet yet. Yeah, it'll stay quiet and all. Not that we haven't tried. We've given over 200 comps out. Comps? Complimentaries. Oh. Are you a mate of theirs, Len and Ray? Well, we're just good friends, actually. <laughs> Why? Oh, no reason. You just don't seem to be their type, that's all. <laughs> I'm sorry about your wife. Who told you about my wife? One of the lads, I think. When they said they were bringing you, you know. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me mentioning it. No, of course not. Week for elderly girl scouts, is it? No man is an island, Mrs. Hard. We all need a helping hand sometimes. Yes, but I'm not a man, am I, Mrs. Walker? Oh, that's what's different about you. Cheer up, you. You, uh, you saw Maxwell, eh? Yes, I flame him, I saw him. 
Oh, what do you mean? Of all the flaming cheek. He offered me my flaming job back. Oh, and, uh, and what did you say? She flaming told him, didn't she, love? Told him she'd take the job. Oh, Otherwise, I'd have wrung her flaming neck, wouldn't I, love? <laughs> Round of drinks, please, Mrs. Walker. We're going to have a toast to the new supervisor. Oh. And that's all from Granada Land this evening. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. And you won't forget to switch off your set, will you? So, uh, this missionary goes up to this cannibal, you see, and he says, My word, young man, what great big muscles you've got. How did you get muscles like that? And the cannibal says, From eating plenty of beans. Beans? Human beans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, on the flipping dance floor, mate. My oh, heck, it doesn't take him long to get going, does it? Oh, uh, I meet Candy. Yeah, we met. Thanks. Uh, have a drink. Have a drink, Candy. Yeah. Oh, oh we need another bottle. Uh, enough's enough, eh? Let's make uh, what's the rush, now, Ken, eh? We? What's the rush? We've got Mother looking after the shop, haven't we? Good old Mother. Oh, come on, Ken. Now, let's leave uh, it, come eh? Come on, come on. Sit down. What's the hurry? What's the matter with you two? It's not even midnight yet. It's half past flaming twelve, So mate. it's half past flaming twelve. So what? I think I'd better get back to the bar. Oh, no, yeah, I come on, Ken. Let's no, no, look! Look, if you've got something to say, then say it. Ken, come on. I've broken a code, haven't I? I've broken the unwritten rule. Well, haven't I? Oh, come on, Yeah, Ken. come on, Ken. Come on out. Come on, have a night out. But don't drop the widow's weeds, not for a second, because that's against the rules. Brilliant. Do you really think I could forget her? Just like that. Come on, let's go have that drink. Well, that was a great idea of yours, wasn't it? Taking him out for the night, mate. Oh, oh. oh, I'm dead sorry. Honest. Oh. 